Well, hi, Jeebus. Hi. Well, welcome to the 41 years of Mills and Boone. So, looking forward to this. Reading 41 Mills and Boone books in a year after the 40 years of Mills and Boone. This is not going to be a regular thing, but it's not going to be a 42 and a 43. It's going to be just this, okay? Because I just had loads of spare. So, I thought, hey, let's, uh, let's get to it. Also, by this point, it'd be in the queue. Um, already reviewed Meet Me in Hawaii by Georgia Toffolo, okay? Um, I've got Meet Me in London as well. I'm um, trying to actually get through. Just finished that the other day. And um, yeah, so we will review this nearer to the date. Here you go, a bit of anticipation. So, but the actual official book of the 41 years of Mills and Boone is A Dante Service. And I said some everyone called Dante. Here we go. I used to love that name. I totally gone off it. I don't know why. Here we go. Read the book. <laughs> Too hot to handle. Oh, sorry. Chantel Shaw at Dante Service. Here we go. Private chef Rebecca Evers has vowed to keep her oven gloves firmly off her boss, sizzling hot celebrity divorce lawyer Dante Joel, for one night things heat up in the kitchen. Dante never would have imagined that Rebecca's chef whites hit on slushes curves. It's like you had his fill. Say so whisker away to Tuscany. It makes it clear that he wants her. No apron strings are tied. That's so attached. In the intense heat of their affair. Affair. Rebecca is so breaking through his ironclad cynicism until she discovers she's unexpectedly carrying Dante's baby. Okay, so it starts out where it's at a christening and Rebecca's there wearing her chef whites. And obviously Dante's like the godfather, it's like a family friend. And Rebecca's there kind of like serving, being like the caterer. Okay, and it's quite interesting, okay, because if Rebecca thinks herself as so kind of I'm a strong independent woman, hear me roar. And straight away, here's page eight, okay, right. Mm hmm. It is, she told herself, praying he had not noticed she'd been staring at him like a lovesick adolescent. In fact, there was no reason why Dante Jarrell might not be smiling at her. Over the past two months, they established a harmonious and friendly working relationship, but the relationship had never been across the invisible boundary between an employee and a member of, of his staff. But, but, um, but, but the thing is, unlike the lovely Alicia, who hardly warranted the attention of the gorgeous multi-millionaire playboy, she thought with a rueful glance and I have a uniform of black and white check rather than a pristine white jacket. Her clothes were practical but did not flatter her gracious figure. They didn't seem rather to emphasize the fact that she was not being pulled thin. The fashion dictated. Well yeah, she's a goddamn chef. Okay. Today's a uh, chef's hat. Her hair was tightly braided and pinned to the top of her head. She would have after spending hours in a hot in a hot kitchen. Her face was pink and shiny. If only she put in a bit of makeup, but it was still unlikely that Dante would take any notice of her. <laughs> it's like she took this job with Dante because she's got the hots for Dante. <laughs> okay, so she comes across as so, so kind of needy. Okay. But anyway, okay. But obviously, Rebecca, because in these books, you can't just have a simple relationship. And this is quite tragic. Rebecca called off her wedding because her fiancé Gareth was having an affair. And it turned out, um, and it turned Rebecca really, really cynical as well when it comes to dating, okay? But yeah, you think, okay, they'd match with her cynicism, but basically her cynicism is just a front. There you go. Mm -hmm. Right. The sensible thing would not would be to apologise for poking her nose into matters that did not concern her, but the grandma inside Rebecca had other ideas. The phone call from her mother had triggered memories of the day Gavra called off the wedding. She still remembered the gut-wrenching shock when she felt when he admitted she'd been sleeping with Claire, her best friend, for months. Was it too much to ask a to be honest and truthful with women? <clears throat> right. And basically, she basically used a dime to lead on his girlfriend. And it's like, well, no, she wasn't my girlfriend. She was just like a fling. And now she won't leave me alone. Dante, oh, I, whatever you say about him, okay, he makes his rules clear straight away. Okay? This is Dante's point of view, his perspective. Okay? Right. His code, if you will. Right. I never cheat. I've stripped a relationship with one woman at a time. And I always end a relationship before I start another one. I'm completely upfront at the beginning of an affair that I'm just not looking for permanence. Sure, it's better than stringing a woman along, building up our hopes that I might make a commitment to her. Right. Oh, in other words, you're paragon of virtue when it comes to relationships, she says sarcastically. I like to think so, he replies seriously. I certainly don't deliver set out to hurt anyone. Right. Exactly. So, but, <clears throat> but the thing is, um, well, the thing is, Dante basically like, decides to invite her out and like to meet people. So she buys a lovely designer gown, which is all calls it style, you know, causing her assets. Yes, we know. We, we know. 
um, gets her hair styled and Dante is blown away because by it's like, oh my gosh, she looks stunning. You know, she is a woman of, under all the chef's whites. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Right. And he actually tells her, right. And Dante basically, this is, this is, this is Dante trying it on. Okay, right. I was completely blown away when you walked into the sitting room. You look so beautiful in your dress. I had no idea that you could still such delightful curves with that shape for clothes you wear. And your hair, he lifted a hand from her waist and flowed it through her rippling waves. I seen back, I seen down her back. It felt like silk. Okay. So, essentially, Dante, they, they, they have sex, okay. And the thing is, Dante's been out front, okay, about what he expects, okay. Right. And... So she, okay, no strings attached, it's a sex. Next morning, okay, they wake up and after, oh, the great, best, of course, of course, it would be the best night of her entire life. And she's like, what have I done? I've got to quit. And Dante won't let her, okay? And one thing is this, okay, she basically tries to blame the alcohol. And Dante says, nah, nah, don't you even go there, okay? You was done cold sober last night, okay? You don't blame alcohol on this, okay? We both walked into this willingly, okay? And... But the thing is, Dante is really, really interested in her, okay? He, he's actually talking to her a little bit more, so to open up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this bit here, okay, because Dante, this, this is how Dante is described. This is ridiculous, okay? Right. I don't understand why you no longer want to work for me, said Curtly. I can't believe carry on as before. Mm -hmm. As he spoke the words, Dante realised the futility of them. He could never go back to thinking of Rebecca as a member of his staff. When they see it in her, uh, in her naked body, not with voluptuous glory. Okay? The way he responded to him last night as he revealed an earthly sens sensuality that Dante found addictive. Making love to her, a way to his appetite, he'd been looking forward to having her to, um, having to fill the jewels of his mistress and cook for well. He would not even thought about a time scale. So he likes her, but obviously, okay, she wants, that's like, what, be, 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 cared, be my mistress, okay? And... Well, I'd still do what I do on the side, and she's not having that. But the thing is, she can't just quit, and Dante will ruin her reputation, okay? This bit here, if she does, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Under the terms of the contract you signed, I accepted the job with my chef. You were required to give one more notice before you can leave. I better gave a start regards, but yes, technically, I suppose that's true. But I should, under the circumstances, and the problem with the circumstances, he said coolly, work with me to find a replacement cook in a few days. And I will demand you will work your full amount of notice. I will see you for breach of contract. Right. And I imagine it would be difficult for you to find another job. And now that your previous employees will vouch for you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I thought you would be glad for me to leave without any fuss, he said. Why do I want you to leave when you're a superb cook and an excellent lover? Here you go. Right. So Dante basically says, you're not quitting. Basically, come with me to Tuscany. Be my mistress, okay? If you're going to leave, it's like, you're going to leave, you're going to leave. But in this month, you will come to Tuscany, you will cook in my family home, and we will just have wild sex, and then you can go in a month, okay? Well, hey, it goes to that, terms of conditions. I'm going to kick you in the dick, but anyway, okay? However, <laughs> this is a, they have sex, obviously, okay? And Dante's like, contraceptive. She's like, I'll just get them on the pill, okay? Mm. Almost straight away, straight away, she's feeling sick straight away i mean magical okay <laughs> it's absolutely magical all right all right this bit here mm -hmm. all right this react badly to alcohol i wasn't drunk last night she flushed as you recalled had dante and insisted she'd know exactly what she'd doing with when she slept with him but her body sometimes reacts badly to alcohol and i can see her being sick or traced to it to have gone oh yeah automatically boom she's pregnant <laughs> dante is super swimmers Right. But the thing is, even though she's in Tuscany, okay, with Dante and his family home, getting to know him a little bit better, um, she really, even though she knows the score is, I'm here for a month cooking and sex, and then I'm out, she starts behaving like the jealous girlfriend. It's quite funny how her reaction to this. She does come across as way a bit pathetic, okay? Right. I used to be here, okay. Dante was standing with a tall, slim, blonde woman wearing very short, short shorts that revealed her long tan legs. Then one turned her head and Rebecca knew she was stunningly beautiful. A tired knot formed in her stomach as she watched the woman laughing with Dante. It's clear that she had a close relationship. Was a blonde his mistress? If so, then why had he insisted on her coming to Tuscany with him? 
and why not does she feel jealous why do you feel jealous rebecca why do you feel jealous however however no this is nicole so okay sawyer who is no friend of dante's who's basically a literary agent because rebecca wants to publish a book about her grandma's recipes okay and now um nicole's gonna help her because nepotism's alive and well in this book okay right yeah she's a sorry um uh, sorry not a shade not a cook you're a photographer aren't you i'm writing a cooking book based on my grandma's recipes and dante mentioned she might take photographs for me yeah she's a freelance photographer so yeah so dante's helping her get her goal okay but the thing is of course um the month is over they rebecca leaves okay and then she finds out she's pregnant okay and then obviously dante finds out right mm-hmm And the thing is, is this, is this case, she's like, we're both inter intended adults, we have to accept that no form of contraception is 100% safe. Yeah, because we're better screwed up by contraception. I want proof the child is mine. You better live and taste the blood. And once you have your proof, will you demand to have an abortion? If so, you'll waste your birth because I'm going to have this child with or without your support. As soon as you'll be shocked, of course I would not want you to. Because what happened with Dante, to make him so cynical, was that his ex-girlfriend, um, had his child, turned out not to be his child. She basically, she was a gold digger. And, um, so you fell in love with this baby, then the baby got taken away, if you will. And, yeah. Right. But the thing is, of course, Rebecca doesn't tell Dante, okay, he's pregnant with his child, you know, he takes him forever to find out. And, and this bit here, okay, mm -hmm. right, this bit here. Barbara may not appeal to Dante, but a responsibility to the baby. Had they tried to wiggle out of that responsibility, I was just the baby wasn't his. Oh, sorry. Sorry, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Sorry. That's a bit okay. How dare you suggest this baby is not mine? Well, why not? Hold on. You're, you basically said yourself, okay, you're a free, independent woman, okay, who owns your own autonomy, can sleep wherever you want. You chose to sleep with, da with Dante. No one forced you into that. You chose to go to Tuscany with him. You chose pretty much everything else, okay? Even though, okay, fine, the whole kind of situation between, like, they're taking those to Tuscany. But at the end of the day, every time Dante suggested it, Rebecca went along. And if she said no, he would have respected that, okay? But she chose to sleep with this guy. She chose to have his child. She chose not to tell him. And now, okay, she acts like a toddler when it's, how dare you doubt he's not your baby? Why didn't you tell him in the first place? Okay? All right. I'm carrying your child and no one else. It's a pace, a hand on her stomach, and I'm eyes baby with maternal fine protectiveness. If I must time, we are going to be parents, so you better get used to the idea. Right. If you insist on proof, I'm willing for a paternity test to be done. She closed her eyes to hold back the tears that suddenly blindsided her. I could you think I tried to con you into fatherhood if I knew your child wasn't yours? Because it happened to him once before. Okay? Right. And well, the thing is, Dante generally started to fall for her. Okay, for Rebecca when they were in Tuscany in that month, and so he's he's actually quite flabbergasted by this entire situation. He's just marriage, okay, because it's the right thing to do. She loves him, even though she's not willing to admit it. He loves her, okay. Right, I want to marry you, Rebecca. Right, foolish she was. His word had evoked a fierce longing to accept the proposal, but she was not that naive. That she did not understand why it had such a suddenly decided that marrying holds a good idea. And the reason you want to marry me is because of the legal implications regarding your baby. Let's face it, you specialise in family law and you know you will have equal parenting rights if we are married. He said curtly. Actually, he's got equal parenting rights whatsoever. You know, I would love to read a Mills and Boone novel where all the actions of a woman are kind of thrown back in the face in court. Where, see, did you tell him he was the father of your child? No. Did you tell him you were on the pill? Yes. Did the pill fail? Yes. Okay, yeah, and it was kind of thrown back at her. He's got equal rights anyway, okay? He's the father of the baby. And he's thinking, okay, hold on, he's a, she is, a, she's a chef, and he's like a really, really rich um, lawyer, okay? Like, moneyed lawyer. And he's thinking, there's a custody battle. <laughs> well, she works with hours, long hours being a chef, okay? He accept with her employer, okay? Hey, but anyway, it's sorted out. The baby has a heart condition, but it's sorted out very, very easily. Um, Rebecca goes back to her family home to kind of like sort herself out there. And obviously, the baby's fine. They live happily ever after. And they get married. Rebecca's books are a success. 
So I find it really, really kind of twisting this. Okay, Rebecca's been through a lot emotionally because of the whole kind of cheating situation. So is Dante. There's a total communication barrier here. But the fact is that Rebecca, she screwed up with this department case. She didn't tell Dante the next judgmental about how you read about coming a father. You know? Hey. No. You're not seeing you, Rebecca. So, anyway. A Dante service um, by uh, Chantel Shaw. Dante's a to toxic. Rebecca's an idiot. And book one down. 41 years of Mills and Bliss. Sign off, everyone. Mwah. Bye now.